percent or better, they're nine and zero. However, no one yet has shot 50 percent against Indiana. Give your car the starting power it needs. Get the Napa Legend, the better battery. We'll be back with the starting lineups after these messages. We were trying to solve the mystery. Not right now. There's Indiana. Yeah. Who's this, Steve? Here, here. Here's a look at the starting lineups. You can see from Minnesota. Uh, Steve, their power is inside. Walton, Carter, and Colander. Vashawn Leonard and Air Ariel McDonald are the outside rank. There you can see Leonard at 16 and a half a game. For Indiana, Calvert Cheney's on top, 22-7, but he's averaged 30 points a game in his last three ball games. And you can see the balance scoring, all five players in double figures. Let's take a look at the two coaches. There they met before the ball game. Clem Haskins on the left, Coach Bob Knight. Haskins, of course, a great NBA career, played nine years. And we'll be ready for the tip-off of tonight's ball game after these messages. Farm Bureau Insurance has been protecting the people of Indiana since 1935. During that time, we've faced our share of challenges. There you see the matchups, Indiana and Minnesota. The Gophers a big defeat here last year, 96 to 50. Indiana won by 46 points, but a turnaround up in Minneapolis as Indiana lost that game by four. So Minnesota tough at Williams Arena. You know, Laz, I was looking at Minnesota's, uh, uh, their yearbook, and on the back cover of the yearbook this year was a picture of the Indiana defeat, 71-67 in Minneapolis. That's how much it meant to the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Coach Bob Knight looks on. Art McDonald, Tom O'Neill, and Sid Rodeheffer are the officials. Indiana wins the tap, and they have the first possession. Minnesota will change their defenses quite a bit, so Indiana's got to keep an eye on that. Cheney from the outside, a quick one. And the ball deflected out of bounds to Minnesota. Steve there, just one pass, and Cheney goes right up with the shot. Yeah, that's one of the things that we talked about earlier, that they have to uh, have the patience to work the ball around. That makes that defensive club have to play defense also. This is Ariel McDonald. He's the point guard. Greg Graham bothering him. Good drive as McDonald uh, gets around Graham and draws the foul. Clem Haskins played at Western Kentucky, coached there for a while. He's now uh, his seventh year at Minnesota. Right off the bat, uh, the guards try to take it right to the hoop against Indiana. McDonald able to draw the foul. Only 65% from the line. And he gets the first point of the game. See how quickly Minnesota gets in that lane. They may have come up with that rebound had he not made it. 2 0 lead. We're still in the first minute of the ball game. There's Coach Bob Knight. 605 victories, 212 defeats. He's looking for that 6 0 6. Indiana brings it up now. About three quarter pressure by Minnesota. This is Leonard, 21 on defense. Graham's got the ball. Looks like they've started Walton on Calvert, trying to use his quickness. A couple of the other underneath players are a little beefier, but they're just not as quick as Walton would be. Well, we see a couple different kinds of defense against Cheney today. Bailey pulls up with the shot, but it falls well short. Minnesota on the board. McDonald's in the quarter. Graham did a nice job to keep him pointed that way. This is Colander, really improved a lot offensively in some tape we saw before the game. 
Look how Cheney tries to force back to this weak side. You know, Minnesota's not uh, averse to having an up-tempo kind of game if they can get it off the boards. But Sean Leonard from the outside, and he's averaging 16 and a half a game. A quick start for Minnesota. They're up 4-0. It's the kind of start that we didn't want to see, uh, or the Indiana folks wouldn't want to see, and that is with Sean getting up early. Cheney with the shot is no good. Henderson had the rebound, but Colander able to take it away. There you see, Steve, uh, Minnesota likes to run when they can. Indiana back quickly. McDonald on top. 34 is Randy Carter. Really like this kid. 6'8", 235, a junior. Tough to stop inside. Using a little high post pick there by Colander to try to free, free uh, McDonald. And they'll play a little inside outside here too, trying to get Carter down low on the blocks. That's Matt Nover with a tough job on Carter. Henderson came to help and stopped a possible shot. Indiana, good defensive segment here. Loose ball on the floor. Henderson's got it for the jam. And Indiana's on the board. Coast to coast for Henderson. It's four to two. Minnesota leads. And that may exemplify the difference between quickness and strength right there as Allen was able to pop it out of the hands of Colander and take it the full length of the court. Here's Leonard Bailey trying to force him left. He dishes off to Walton, and Walton hits the baseline jumper. Minnesota hot from the field. We talked about field goal percentage being an important part of this game. And Walton averages about 14 points a game, so that's uh, a shot that he's going to take every time he can get that one. Sweet left-hand jumper. Henderson from the baseline. He's usually good with that shot. He comes up short. Indiana is still taking some quick shots. Here's the running game by the Gophers. Leonard misses. Indiana fails to block out, and Walton gets the rebound and the putback. Indiana didn't get back on defense at all that time. And Minnesota's going to push it right at him, and they're trying to get off to a good start, which they have. Eight to two, the Gophers lead. And just as you mentioned, Steve, Indiana not focused right now on a good start. And an offensive foul is going to be called on Cheney. Jason Walt moved his feet very well that time, and he drew the foul. Yeah, I think you're going to see here that that was a good call. Calvert put his left hand out right there into the midriff. Walton with good position, and Walton is quick enough to stay with Calvert. You can see how important momentum is to a college basketball game, and right now Minnesota has it. 8 to 2, 16 45, left in the half. Matt Nover outside on Carter. Minnesota still trying to punch it in, but they're going to take that shot. Sean Leonard will take that all night long, averaging about 16 or 17 a game. Only a sophomore. 10 to 2, Minnesota leads. Leonard a streak shooter, but he's made two in a row here. Anderson tries to go inside to Graham, but recovers. Indiana's offense really not hitting it there at 87 points a game. Bailey cuts in the middle and takes the left-handed shot. 10 to 4, Indiana trail. What was really good about that was ball movement, both uh, with the ball and away from the ball. And you're going to have to make Minnesota play defense if you're Indiana. Good switch that time as Graham comes out on McDonald. Here's Bailey on Leonard. Well, they really use the high post pick, class. Trying to get a pick and roll there. This time it goes down to Walton. Leonard wants to go one-on-one, -on -one, and he hits another one, three in a row. And Steve, you, I know you've had these same streaks. You just get hot, maybe that's not a great shot off the dribble, but when it's going, it's going good. Yeah, and when you talk about a streak shooter, the only thing you want to, as a defensive team, is make sure his streak comes against somebody else. But tonight, he's off and running. 12 to four, Minnesota leads. Two, three zone now by the Gophers. Leaves Bailey open from the outside. He misses on the three, and Minnesota has the possession. Leonard was pretty focused, speaking about focus. Right then, he didn't push the ball up. He saw that the defense had gotten back from Indiana. Bring it on up. Their half-court offense is working real well, so look for the good shot that way. Look at Henderson trying to come out and erase that pick. They do go down to Colander, and he hits the runner from the baseline off the board. Chad Colander with his first two. It's 14 to four, Minnesota leads. If you're Coach Clem Haskins, you could not have drawn it any better for the first five minutes. Exactly the way his team had to come out here. They haven't won here in Bloomington. Only won in the last ten times. Steal now as Deshaun Leonard gets it up quickly. McDonald with an easy basket for Minnesota. That brings Bob Knight off the bench, as well as the Minnesota team really pumping him up. 16-4, to four, the Gophers lead. Graham on the drive. 
gets up high on that shot. Holander can't block it. And Indiana trails by 10. Greg Graham's head fake set that one up for his drive. But still, Indiana only one or two passes that time down. Stayed early in the game, but Indiana needs to concentrate on that defense to get back in this thing. Walton in the corner. Holander really working on Henderson inside. And the steal by Henderson, good defense. He decides not to bring it up quickly. Two turnovers for the Gophers. Another zone this time. Graham from the outside for three. And he gets his first, his fifth point of the game now. So Greg Graham the surprise offense for Indiana. Well, he needed a good start. He had a poor first half in the Ohio State game. And they look for him to get off to good starts. And this is an important point for him to get off that way. 11 points and three assists against Ohio State for Graham. Here's Leonard again, one on one. That time he bricks it off the board. Henderson with the rebound. Henderson, the third leading rebounder in the Big Ten. Just under 10 a game. Here's Graham from the outside. And just as McDonald lit it up for Minnesota, Greg Graham lighting it up for Indiana. Well, you're talking about a good streak. That's this, it. This week's Lotto Cash drawing is worth $6 million. Be sure to get your Lotto Cash tickets today. And a whistle and a foul on Damon Bailey. The pressure on the inside. We've got a timeout. It's 16 to 12, Minnesota leads, and we'll be back after these messages. The Grand Cast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated as an intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. Are you ready? Indiana wasn't ready to start this ball game, but they're getting back into it now. It's 16 to 12. Indiana in the last minute 36 has run off an 8 to 0 run to close that gap to four. Let's take a look at some shooting. Minnesota is hot from the field. Well, when you're shooting 80% when you come into Assembly Hall and start the game, you're going to be in the ball game. There's no question about that, especially with the talent Minnesota has. Rebounding edge to Minnesota, although both teams average about 38 a game. The Gophers on offense. Looks like a moving pick now. That foul's called on Nate Tubbs, number four. He's just his third in the lineup. Clem Haskins likes to go to his bench. There's Tubbs. He's out of Fort Wayne. Played at Wayne High School with seniors, 6'4", 210. A good defensive player. He had 16 points in their game against Purdue recently. Tubbs in there for defense. Yeah, and he's guarding Calvert Chaney right now. And obviously that's the call is let's put Tubbs on Chaney, make him work real hard for every shot he gets. Indiana makes a change at the guards. Chris Reynolds and Todd Leary both in at that timeout. Turnover by Indiana, fast break by Minnesota. Reynolds does the job and Nova comes up with the board. Indiana picks up the pace. Henderson forces on the baseline, but he gets it. Looked like he was trying to draw the foul and uh, got away with a good shot. I think he was expecting the foul there. Fortunate that went in. 11.54 left in the game, 16-14. Indiana closes it to two. Closest it's been since the early minute of the game. Indiana has definitely taken it up a notch defensively, and that happens when Chris Reynolds comes in the game. His intensity is contagious. That's why he's in there. Here's Carter. This is McDonald trying to drive on Larry. Off-balance shot, but he gets about a seven-footer on the baseline. Good defense there by Larry. He just made a good shot. Yeah, I don't think you worry about a defensive effort there. If he's going to shoot shots like that and make them, so be it. Henderson with his second jump shot in a row, this time off the dribble, about eight feet on the baseline. Still a two-point difference. For two defensive teams, we've had a lot of scoring here early. Henderson tries for the steal. He's able to knock it away, but Minnesota retains possession. This is Townsend Orr, 6'1 junior. And Reynolds gets called with this foul. Sid Rodeheffer with the call. And that's going to bring a timeout. 18-16, Minnesota leads, and we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network.
the last play when Chris Reynolds got a call for holding. And that's always a real difficult call for an official to make and for the fans of the defensive really player to, to really agree with that. It didn't really uh, affect the play as such, but a foul nonetheless against Reynolds. Indiana with four team fouls now. Minnesota just one. They're shooting both teams on five, Steve. Sure, Minnesota's keeping it up. Bob Knight off the bench. He wanted to push there with the offhand. This is Tubbs on the baseline. The rebound comes right to Henderson. He gets it to Reynolds. Lead pass to Nover. He goes up strong and a block outside. Dana Jackson with a nice timing on that block. Jackson, 6'8", senior out of Chicago. Watch this, Steve. Well, Jackson's one of the two seniors on the club. Timed it perfectly. He read that one all the way back at the free throw line. Chance for Indiana to tie this game. Leary's outside. The defense that time by Leonard tried to knock it off of Leary, but Rhoda Heffer gives the ball to Indiana. If the Indiana players didn't know it by now, Minnesota is going to play them tough and hard all night long. Larry. They're going to have to reciprocate with some good defense at the other end. Larry open from the free throw line. He missed that jumper short. 10-21 left, 18-16. Minnesota leads. Indiana trying to clamp down on the defense. Lob pass. Good switch that time by Cheney. Indiana wanted to travel on Carter, and they didn't get it. Reynolds tries for the steal, much better intensity in this defensive segment. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Carter's going to take it from the outside, and he nails it. Carter scoring 13 points a game, really known for his rebounding, but he stretches the Minnesota lead to four. And another whistle, this time against Townsend Orr. So it looks like on both sides of the floor, the officials really called the hand checking. Now, Lance, how come the Indiana fans agreed with that holding call, and they didn't with the other one on Reynolds? Amazing. You know this is Assembly Hall, not Williams Arena. There's the call right there. Orr doesn't agree with that call. Second team foul for Minnesota. Indiana's going to make some substitutions. Greg Graham came in. Kick this time by Reynolds. Here's Townsend Orr. And Reynolds with great hustle. He gets tripped. He trips over a chair from the, one of the managers. Let's see where he is. He's up. He's up and ready. Great hustle by Reynolds. Now you're going to see two great defensive plays here. First by Townsend Orr to knock it away. And Nate Tubbs finds him on the fast break. Now here comes Chris. He's going to the outside hand. Good move. Great block as he got all ball. And there you see him going into the crowd head first. Watch it another angle of that. Yeah. Great effort. They're so going to put him on the line for two. Got his foot caught there, and uh, they're going to call it a foul. Didn't look like it on that replay. And Orr comes up short on that free throw. Good look at Townsend Orr from Dalton, Illinois. Thorn Ridge High School. Who else went to Thorn Ridge High School, Steve? Let's uh, test your memory. Oh, gosh, I have enough gray hair here to remember. Uh, Quinn Buckner. The great Quinn Buckner, a great leader for our teams, I'll tell you. And Townsend Orr from the school. Look at the fans in the back. That's the student section really trying to bother Orr on that free throw. It worked once. 21-16, 9.30 left in the, ball, in the first half of this ball game. Indiana not on track offensively yet. Cheney not getting the shots today, Steve. No, Tubbs doing a real good job on him right now, getting a lot of good help from his teammates. It's the advantage of having five Indiana starters and double figures. When Cheney's not able to do it, the others try to come through. Clem Haskins doing a great job with a young team. Foul on Minnesota. That goes against Rashawn Leonard, his first. Third team foul, out of bounds to Indiana. Ryan Evans in the lineup now for Indiana. It's Graham and Reynolds at the guard. Evans, Cheney, and Nover for Indiana. 2-3 zone by the Gophers. And Indiana needs to pass it around. There we go. Evans for three. Matt Nover with a tip. What a rebound. Indiana did a good job that time of passing it around, getting the open jumper in the corner for Evans. It didn't fall, but 
the people that uh, have been moving around got in good position for a tip in, and Matt Nover was able to hand to. Deshaun Leonard on the drive. Nover had the block, but a shove. No, it's going to go on Leonard, a charge. And Reynolds able to draw a position. Yes, that's road effort. Deshaun Leonard can't believe it. Let's watch it. You're going to see two players come over here and make big defensive plays. Chris Reynolds first, draws the foul. Matt Nover making sure there's not going to be any two points there. Graham blocks from behind. Reynolds, Reynolds takes the charge. And then Nover brought blocks on the front. The defense is bringing back in the ballgame. 8.38 left, 21-18. Indiana trails by three. Zoned by Minnesota. Nover kicks it out. Here's Graham for three. He's long on that one. Tubbs with the rebound. Minnesota up quickly, Walton. Tubbs and Orr outside. Graham faces forces on the baseline. Cheney comes to help. There's an offensive rebound. Long by Orr. And that's Walton, Jason Walton, left-hander. And he gets two more. Minnesota still able to keep that three to five point lead. And very important from their standpoint that they stay on top through the first half. Here's Cheney's first shot as he comes in on the baseline. And he falls short on that one. Indiana had a, a short uh, struggle against Ohio State early, Steve, when they scored 70% for the field early. And then uh, we're able to build an eight-point lead. But Minnesota's not letting go of them. No, but you've got to come back defensively for Indiana. And Minnesota, on the other hand, just keeps the same intensity, both offensively and defensively. They're going to be okay. Moore goes back to Walton, and he nails the jumper. Cheney not able to recover quickly enough. Jason Walton scores, and he's had a good first half. He's got eight now on four field goals. 25-18, Minnesota leads. Evans fakes the three that time, dishes to Nover. Tough pass to come up with as players dive on the floor. Minnesota's going to get it out of bounds. 7.04 left, Minnesota leads 25-18, and we'll be back after these messages. As part of the MX High Energy Play of the Game, MX Coal Industries is making a donation to the Bob Knight Library Endowment Fund. There you see the score, 25-18, 7.04 left, and let's take a look at the field goal shooting for Indiana in the first half. Not bad at 50, but Steve, look at that Minnesota. Minnesota's keeping it right there, making six out of ten shots. They're also doing a, a very effective job on Calvert Cheney. 0 for 3 from the field right now. Cheney having trouble. Minnesota's on a 7 to 2 run in the last 340, so only two points for Indiana. They've gone cold. Pass inside to Dana Jackson. Indiana's going to foul. Minnesota's just getting the ball in too close, Steve. That time it was a real good back cut. And you're going to see where Calvert's playing real tough defense out to the side. Good quick move right here. Dana Jackson, senior, experienced, knows when to take advantage of that. McDonald really motioned him to take the back cut. Cheney couldn't recover. And Henderson picks up his first foul, 16 fouls. But Dana Jackson in trouble from the line as he misses that first one. You can see he's not a very good free throw shooter. You know, this is the kind of game that we've come to expect when Indiana and Minnesota get together at Williams Arena in Minneapolis. This is a great effort by Minnesota to this point here at Bloomington. 6.46 left. Talking to the Minnesota coaching staff, they really didn't look at this game as a positive. Uh, we're looking uh, maybe to Penn State next Saturday, but Minnesota right in this ball game. Indiana needs a wake-up call. 1-2-2 zone. Indiana analyzing the defense. Got to make that zone breathe. We're in and out. No one's touched it in towards the paint. And it's all perimeter at this point. There's Cheney. He's long on that shot. Minnesota hitting the boards. Indiana having trouble getting any offensive rebounds. 26-18, eight-point lead. 6-10 left in the half. A good first half for Minnesota. Cheney now 0 for 4 from the field. He's averaging 18 shots a game, so well below that average today. 
Post defense inside. Colander with an advantage on Evans. Colander 6'9, 225. Evans trying to muscle him out there. He a knee there to the back. And, uh, Evans ball gets called for foul. Coach Nye, we've seen that look a few times back in our day, haven't we, Steve? He's not pleased, Laz. That's what I interpret there. A couple of defensive stoppers and uh, get Cheney involved in the offense. Okay, Indiana going. There's Clem Haskins. Got to be pleased with his teams. You're right, Steve. His teams always play tough. I like Cole Lander. He's uh, just a sophomore. He's got good quickness for a big guy. Nails that free throw. Gives Minnesota a 10 point lead. He made both of them. There's your score, and the Minnesota fans that are here right behind their bench are up and cheering their gophers. Diaz had trouble against the zone. Looks like a 2-3 now. There it goes inside. That's what Indiana wants. Cheney gets it blocked. Still good things will come from that kind of move. It makes that zone aware of people cutting through the lane. Indiana's got uh, two players on either baseline, Evans and, Hen and Cheney. Looking for a shot there. Bailey forces that one off the dribble. And fighting for that rebound, grabbed onto the jersey. Indiana struggling on the offense. Tough shot by Damon that time. It would have been a great shot, obviously, if it goes in. But he's going one on four against the zone. And even though he's taking it in and, and making them play, it's still a real tough shot because the other four Indiana players are looking on. 18 fouls against Indiana. One and one for Minnesota. Good look at Damon Bailey there. Nine points, three rebounds, and two assists against Ohio State. But we've had the exact opposite of the usual Indiana game. The opponent is the one going to the free throw line instead of Indiana. 29-18, 11 point Minnesota lead. Coach Knight having a little discussion with the official. But Indiana really hadn't found that lineup that's, that can click. Second free throw also good. 12 point lead now by Minnesota. I'd say it's a real understatement to say this is an important five minutes for Indiana as they go into the halftime. Inside to Henderson, back to Bailey. Here's Evans. Good move on the drive. And a hole that time called on Colander. A little better offensive move at that time by Indiana. Brian Evans does a good job of reading the defensive player on him. That time he posts up, he gets a feel. He's looking back towards the middle. Does that little juke step, and now he's on his way. If the guy doesn't foul him, he gets the layup. Here's the lob pass into Cheney. It works. He has to fall back on the shot, but he does draw the foul. Indiana trying to get Cheney involved in the offense. The foul goes against Tubbs, his second. That's a good look at Nate. And that's going to put Cheney on the line. So Indiana finally getting to that free throw line. What can you say about Cheney? 30 points and seven and a half rebounds his last three games. There you see his stats on Ohio State. He is on fire. With every foul shot made by the Hoosiers in tonight's game, Indiana soybean farmers are donating $50 to Gleaner's Indiana Food Bank Network to help feed Indiana's hungry. Soybeans can be found in everything from the food you eat to soy diesel fuel. Well, Sean Leonard checks in from Minnesota. Cheney gets ready for his second Shot 30 to 19. Indiana trails by 11. 509 left. Cheney nails the second one. This will be a big part, Steve. Let's mark it down. 509 left in the half. Indiana trails by 10. They've got to cut that lead down going into the half. And Cheney makes his first two points. Sometimes free throws can get a good shooter going. This crowd wants some offense. Right now they want the defense as Indiana tries for the stopper. And a foul on Colander as Brian Evans holds his ground. Colander's going to pick it up, and both teams down with the bonus. Let's see if Evans gets some shots. He will. Steve, let's take a look at it. Take a good look at these two players, because you're going to see them for three more years. Colander, a redshirt sophomore. Brian Evans, a redshirt freshman. And I think you're going to see a lot of good ball from both of those players over the years. Colander comes out. He's got two fouls, and I want to risk that third one here in the first half, but he's done a nice job. Clem Haskins. Pleased with what he's gotten out of his big guy. Brian Evans misses on that free throw. Free throw is one of his 
some real strengths. 87% coming into the ball game. He'd only missed three all year. 10 point Minnesota lead. Graham nearly comes up with the steal. As we talked earlier about something's got to get tonight. Indiana scores about 80 some points a game. Minnesota holds people to 67. Drive that time. Evans tries to draw the foul and Carter able to get it. Go ahead with your points. Yeah. Steve. And as you see right now, Minnesota has it right where they want it in a 50 to 60 point ball game. And Indiana only 20 points here, more than three quarters away through this first half. Brian Evans on the baseline, a shot he normally hits. He misses short on that one. Four minutes left in the half, and Minnesota stretches that lead to 12. Les, you and I have been in many of these kind of games where things are just not adding up for Indiana, and yet on the other end, Minnesota has the magic touch. And if you're Indiana and you're playing home in a big Big Ten game, you've got to find a way to get back in. There's got to be one or two players, Steve, that really take the the initiative here to lead this team, whether it's a pass or a defensive stand or, or a couple buckets in a row. Let's see if Indiana has a guy come out. There's a good play by Henderson. He deflects the pass. There's a three on one over to Henderson. Misses the layup of Brian Evans on the tip. That's a start anyway. And is that becoming familiar? Evans will follow everything on the offensive end. That brings the crowd to life. 32-22, Indiana down 10. McDonald with the tough shot. Indiana not able to come up with the ball on the long rebound. Vashon Leonard gets called for the foul, and he doesn't like it. Here's the turnaround we talked about. It was a blocked pass by Henderson that led to a three-on-one fast break. Let's watch the last foul. Now watch both teams' efforts here. Loose ball, Vashon Leonard on his way out, gives a little bit of the right hip into Damon Bailey. If he doesn't do that, Bailey picks it up and he's going the other way. Good call, and that's going to put Indiana back on the line with Damon Bailey. Clem Haskins pleads his case, but that foul is going to go on Vashon Leonard, his third now. He picked up his second, and before Clem Haskins could get him out of the ball game, he got his third. A big foul for Leonard. Bailey on the one and one. He hits the first. Soybeans are an excellent source of protein and everything from soup to cereal, and that goal means $50. Donated to Gleaner Statewide Food Bank Network by Indiana Soybean Farmers. Bailey has three points now. Indiana trails by nine. Now eight. And we're at the three-minute mark. Indiana trails 32-24. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. left here in the first half. Indiana down by eight. Let's watch Brian Evans on this last play. Here's the defense. Henderson's able to knock it away. Here's the fast break, a three on one. Look at Evans hustling down the floor. We know 34, not only Evans, but Green could shoot. Look at this leaping ability. That's something I haven't seen 34 do in the old days. Well, as you missed the day in practice that I dunked one. One time, he said, fans, look at the shooting now. Minnesota still doing a nice job, but Indiana improving. Not enough shots for Indiana. And Minnesota killing Indiana on the boards. Eight-point lead, 245 left in the first half. Indiana needs a defensive stop. Good trap by Cheney on Tubbs. Tubbs calls timeout to avoid the five-second call. And Coach Knight's talking to one of the referees now about Tubbs putting that right arm out right into the gut of one of the Indiana players. And that should have been an offensive foul in his opinion. 
the officials have really been watching that. Steve, one of the things I think that has evolved to college basketball, and they may have picked it up from the pro ranks, is this ability of players to call timeout. That time, Tubbs really pretty much out of control, but we see players tackle loose balls where they just barely get possession of it. They may be falling out of bounds or they're going to be tied up. If they somehow call that timeout, a real presence of mind has made a big difference in some games for Indiana. For sure. And, you know, I tell you, there's a, a great example of a kid saying, Indiana's already crept back in within eight points. I'm down here in the corner. I'm in trouble. There's nothing good that's going to come out of this. Call the timeout. Let's regroup and go at it again. If you didn't think the students are back, that's the last shot shows it. Our next telecast will be this Saturday night, January 30th at 8 o'clock, as we invade the Welsh Ryan Arena in Chicago. The Hoosiers taking on the Northwestern Wildcats. Join uh, myself, John Laskowski, and Steve Green for that ball game. Indiana looking to make two in a row here this week. Extend their lead to the Big Ten. There's a look at Bob Knight. It should be an interesting halftime talk, Steve. As we mentioned, Indiana was down 10 points at the 509 mark. They cut that lead down to eight. And they will have the uh, will have the defense now as Tubbs called that timeout. Still some time for Indiana to cut this lead. You, know, you talk about important possessions in a game, and, and they can happen. Obviously, at the last one or two minutes of a game, and that's where everybody talks about it the next day. But there are times in a game, this being one of them, where Indiana's fighting to get back into it. Minnesota wants to hang on to that 8-10 to 10 point lead to go into halftime. And one of the proudest moments Clint Haskins had this coaching career was that defeat up at William Arena last year. And we're going to get a five-second call. So the timeout by Tubbs is negated by good defense by Indiana. The five-second call, and Indiana gets the turnover. Seven now for Minnesota. That's what's putting more gray hair on Coach Clem Haskins' head. Those kind of plays where you take a timeout, you set up a play, and you can't get it off. Bailey on the drive. He's looking for a shot. He goes back to Henderson, and he takes the drive in for the easy layup. Good presence of mind by Henderson. That was good feed by Damon. He saw that he didn't have anything going. Luckily got it over to Henderson for an easy layup. Henderson has eight, 32-26. Indiana trails, 2-12 left in the half. Looks like the defensive pressure's picked up a little. Tapped by Indiana, so no over and back call. Bailey and Graham with the guards. Henderson, Cheney, and Evans inside. Cross court now to Moore. This is McDonald. Cheney really, really battling inside on Walton. Here's Carter, shot clock down to eight. McDonald fires from out, and there's Evans with the rebound. Indiana with a chance to cut it even farther. The lead now six. Inside to Henderson. Good job to control that ball. He wants another shot. He's got another one off the glass. Allen Henderson, a guy coming to the front. Well, he must have felt that one as the ball was in the air to him because he started his offensive move, and he was guarded closely. The crowd is up, 32-28. 116 left, and Minnesota struggling right now. Nowhere to go for McDonald. Five second call. No, didn't get it as he picked up the dribble. Townsend are looking to run that clock down. It's at 13 seconds. Graham forcing baseline. Behind the back dribble. All the way across to Walton. Good drive inside. Henderson with the block. Bailey tries to split the defense, and he picks up the foul. Well, as you mentioned earlier, sometimes a player steps up their game. Obviously, Allen Henderson has it for the last two or three minutes. That's the guy doing it. He blocked that shot that led to the three-on-one break, and here he is again. Great timing. Walton had a layup, and Bailey comes down. Well, here's Damon thinking. He sees that there are two defenders there. Neither one of them can get to him and get in good position. Another angle of the shot block by Allen Henderson. Great timing. I mean, that's what makes a real good shot blocker. It was a one-on-two fast break, but you're right, Steve. Damon makes the right play, splits the defense. Nobody's going to get that foul. He wanted to get to that line. Henderson now leads the team with 35 block shots. Bailey's free throw percentage starting to increase now up to 75%. Indiana trails by three. Damon cuts that lead to two. Reynolds comes in for defense. He replaces Bailey, and Bailey gets a big hand as he leaves the ball game. 
Damon Bailey has six points, but a couple heads up plays. The shot clock off. Let's see if Minnesota holds for the last shot of the half. If I'm Minnesota, I'm going to hold for that last one. Go down no worse than two points up. Here's Walton. Indiana's trying for the five second call. Switch this time. Cheney now on or. 18 seconds left. Look for one of the guards to penetrate. Indiana not letting them anywhere near. Ball still well on the outside. Eight seconds to go. Here's Carter. Orr's open for three, and he nails it. A big shot, and that's going to be it for this first half. Townsend Orr takes a good shot from the outside and makes this score 35-30 at the half. We'll be back with more halftime after these messages. Uh, obviously the lowest, uh, it's got to be the lowest in that man's career here at Indiana. But that obviously shows the three and four passes are not coming. Yeah, and it's going to have to be one of those things that the Indiana players are going to have to have confidence in that we can't score all of these points at once to get way ahead of Minnesota like we thought we were going to. The Gophers are 11 and 0 this year when they lead at halftime, and they're up five here. Indiana's got to put a stop to that streak. Minnesota's had three 12-point leads in the first half. The closest Indiana has come is two points, and now an offensive foul against Colander. And he's in serious trouble now. A big turnover there to start the second half. It looked like Calvert got his hand in there to knock the ball away, and it, and it went off of the Minnesota player. It wasn't called a foul. That's just out of bounds against Minnesota. So Indiana now gets a chance to cut into that lead. Indiana goes back with its starting lineup. Graham and Bailey at the guards. Henderson and Chaney at the forwards. Greg Graham from the outside. And Indiana hits their first shot. Greg Graham has 10 points. The lead for Minnesota now is three. Indiana went to a 1-2-2 type set there with high post going down, picking for low post to start some kind of picking action there and came up with a good shot. McDonald on the baseline hits the jumper. The problem, Steve, really not the, uh, uh, the defense. Indiana held Minnesota 35 points, a buzzer shot for three, really 32 points, but it's the offense. Indiana only scoring 30 points in the first half. And folks, to hear that Calvert Chaney is 0 for 5 at halftime, and only two points for two free throws is amazing. But once again, Minnesota, that's their defensive game plan, and they've stuck to it. Now, Indiana knows that each team that comes in to play defense is going to try to first stop Cheney. And uh, Minnesota, really the most successful we've seen. This is Graham again from the outside. He's long on that three-pointer. Henderson with a nice rebound. He's in the lane, and he's got the bank shot. Allen Henderson really coming to the front. He's got 12 points. Well, sometimes when you go strength against quickness, strength wins. Sometimes quickness wins. And Allen is now getting into the groove here. And I think his quickness is going to make a big difference in the second half. Colander and Henderson really battling on the inside, and Henderson's going to get called for this foul. Good angle here. Watch this. What was I saying about strength again? <laughs> Here's Colander. He just holding him off, and Allen's trying to work around him. Gets the foul. Strength paid off that time. Bailey gets posted up inside by Leonard. And Henderson not able to block that shot. And Minnesota regains that five-point lead. Just starting the second half, 18-10, left here in the ball game. Indiana tries to set a little higher offense, Steve, to really take away the uh, inside defense. Maybe some back cuts now for Indiana. Provided the Indiana players are setting the picks at the appropriate time. The ball's got to be on the side of the floor where the pick and the action is occurring. And sometimes it's ending up on the other side and it does no good. Foul away from the action that time. That goes on Walton, his second. Here's Calvert playing off the pick by Allen Henderson. And Walt trying to fight through, but he used his hands. Henderson thought about taking that shot, but Indiana is taking a little more time on offense. Drive by Bailey. Not quite the accurate pass to Cheney. Now here's Henderson on the baseline, way short on that shot. Minnesota with the board. That's Walt. 
Indiana trails by five. Long lead pass up to Carter. Leonard again posting Bailey. He's getting help though from Nova. Here's Cole Lander and Henderson's gonna draw another quick foul. And Minnesota held on to their lead in the first half without Deshaun Leonard in there. And Leonard is a real skilled offensive player, not only the leading scorer now, but also a good passer. Played on a couple great high school teams at Detroit Southwestern. They were number one in the USA Today poll one year, number two the second. Colander's well, got about 10 pounds on Henderson. He's really trying to use it. They're both 6'9. Henderson's going to come out as Brian Evans checks in. It's a pat on the back from Coach Knight. Colander misses his first, but Henderson's come through on the offense. Dan Dockage giving him some points uh, there on the IU bench. Colander makes the second. 40 to 34, six point lead. Colander with five points. Indiana still not on track offensively. Here's Cheney. It's a pick that time from Evans. Misses off the rim. His shot still not dropping. 0 for 6 now is Cheney. That's a much better shot after four or five passes than after one and a dribble in, especially if you're not hitting your shot, not in your groove as Calvert is. Keller needs a nice jam or a breakaway, something like that to get going. Or a steal as he picks up a steal there. Bailey brings it up. Indiana trying to set the offense. Man-to-man -man defense now by Minnesota. Here's Cheney. Tries the baseline. Colander double teams. He dishes to Graham for the layup. And Calvert Cheney with the assist. Great awareness by Greg Graham. When Calvert gets it down low, he's going to get attention. And a quick cut by a guy like Graham going to the hoop oftentimes yields a nice, easy layup. 40-36. Indiana closes that lead to four. 16-21 left in the game. Here's the drive by Leonard. Indiana has done a nice job of helping out in this ball game. Cheney that time deflects it out of bounds to Minnesota. Nate Tubbs checks back in the lineup. Walton leaves. Well, Haskins gives some instructions there on the bench. There's a shot by Ariel McDonald. It's two. It was on the line. Stretches the Minnesota lead to six. It seems, Steve, that if Indiana can get that lead, it might also uh, project to it some easier scoring, but Indiana's never led in the ball game. And the Minnesota jump shots are a little easier to take when you have a six or an eight point lead, as if you're six or eight point behind in Bloomington. Bailey with the drive. Evans not ready to take the shot. Long outside to Cheney. He goes to Graham. Minnesota really doing a nice job on the help and recovery. Indiana not able to get the shots they want. Shot clock down to 13. I'm sure if you've watched Indiana play a lot, you think they're, boy, they're just out of sync. But I'm telling you, Minnesota is playing some tough defense. Six on the shot clock. Bailey sees it, misses the shot, gets his rebound, goes up, and he gets it. Damon Bailey with some tenacity cuts the lead to four. Bailey with eight points now. This crowd starting to pick up. Here's a back cut as Nova gets beat, and Randy Carter gets the layup. No weak side help that time, and Minnesota gets the easy two. All right, Damon is tired. He's huffing it right now. I think Chris Reynolds is going to come in for him. He's inside now. He's posting up. He takes the shot and draws the foul, this time on Colander. Damon's a versatile player. He can hit from the outside. Since Indiana's having trouble shooting, he's really just taking it inside. Colander starts to limp. But he also picks up his third foul, so now he will come out of the game. Towns and Orr uh, is in for Minnesota. Dana Jackson is in. Minnesota not afraid to use their bench. And they usually outscore their opponent in bench scoring. Bailey's at the line. Indiana trails by six. Don't forget, using soy diesel fuel can help clean up our environment. That foul shot means $50 will be donated to Gleaner's statewide food bank network by Indiana soybean farmers. Bailey gets his ninth point and now misses off the front on the 10th. Indiana trails by five. 14-47. Left in this ball game. Great game so far by Minnesota. Coach Haskins able to rest two of the starters now by putting Tubbs in 
and Dana Jackson, two seniors. Coach Haskins played eight players in the first half. And two off the bench were those two seniors. Potter goes up with a strong move and misses. And there's Jackson, the senior, with the rebound. And Indiana has to foul to prevent the layup. The foul goes on Graham. Let's watch this now on the rebound. Into Randy Carter's a real strong inside player, 6'8", 235. And right back at it is the senior player, Dana Jackson, also a strong player and experienced, obviously. Indiana missed a block out that time. Looked like Evans. Minnesota the easy chance. Jackson hits the first. Didn't start his career at Minnesota. He's a transfer out of San Diego State. 10 of 13 for Minnesota. And Indiana normally outshoots their opponent from the foul line, not in today's case. And he hits the second. 14, 23 left. Minnesota leads 46, 39. And we'll be back after these messages. In retail. Indiana trails by seven. Damon Bailey provided a few highlights for Indiana fans. Seems to try to take control here. Coach Damon takes the shot short off the rim, but as all good players will do, they'll follow their shot. And it was important two points at that point. For Minnesota, the back cut this time by Carter. Evans on the foul right there. Great Full move. court press now by Minnesota. Indiana has Reynolds now in the ball game. Long pass to Evans, breaks the press. It's the shooting, second half. Neither team getting a lot of shots. Minnesota still on fire from the field. Did you see what Minnesota did coming out of the timeout that time? To just mess things up a little bit from the Indiana perspective, put on the full court press. Always keep the opponent guessing. 1-3-1 one, one zone uh, defense. Cheney from the baseline can't get on track. Fight for the board, and Cheney comes up with it. Inside to Nova, he turns. Off balance on that shot, easy rebound for Jackson. Clem Haskins wants Minnesota to slow things down. Reynolds in for some defensive pressure. A little 2-3 offense for Minnesota. They like to put the forwards out to the free throw line extended, give the guards a chance to break through, play a lot of high post stuff, then look down, dump it in low. Graham and Towns and Orr battling outside. Pass to McDonald, and Reynolds can't recover in time. 48-39, McDonald now with 12 points. Minnesota's lead is nine. There's a team on the floor right now that's smelling victory, and it is not Indiana. You can tell by the Minnesota players on the bench and those obviously in the game that they're totally into this. Hold that time on Tubbs. He gets called for the foul. Here's Indiana the last play. is trying to get it inside. There's no question they want the defense to pay attention to those guys in the paint. A little quick on the shot there from Matt. Might have had the lane to dribble that in. Foul on Tubbs. A travel on Chaney. Saw it from up here. 39 points for Indiana. Who would have believed it? 12-33 left in the game. And Damon Bailey's going to check back in. Turnover's 8-6. Not a big part of this game so far. As hard as these two teams are playing, that's really a great statistic for both of their perspectives. Defense has got to win this game for Indiana because the offense is just not clicking. We need a couple defensive stops here, maybe some turnovers to turn into some fast break baskets. Minnesota with good patience. Shot clock down to 10. Carter's open, takes a drive, and here's the charging foul. Chris Reynolds did it again. And Nate Tubbs is down on the floor holding his head. He must have got banged somewhere. Foul's going to go on Carter, though. And we've got a timeout, a puzzled look by Clem Haskins. 39 to 48, Indiana Trails. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network.
the last shot by Minnesota. That's Carter taking it straight to the hoop. Chris Reynolds moves over, gets the charge. Here's where Tubbs goes down. Looks like he's spraying that ankle. Looks yeah. like the right ankle. There's the Minnesota huddle as they get ready to come back on the floor. 11.55 left. There's big Randy Carter right there. Minnesota holding their opponent to 42 and a half uh, field goal shooting from the floor. And you can see they're right on it. 40% for Indiana. They hold their opponents to 67 points a game. And at this rate, Indiana's not going to get there. It's a kick reset re the 45 second clock. And once again, Minnesota comes out of a timeout, goes into a half court 1 3 1 trap. Something different. Haven't seen a lot of it. Just keeps Indiana on their guard and off guard, really. A couple shot fakes there. Indiana's not used that before. That keeps the defense off their feet. And Bailey hits the shot. So that is the thing about a three-point shot. Does it get you right back in a game, both mentally and, of course, on the scoreboard? Maybe that's the shot to propel Indiana's offense. The crowd sure thinks so. They're up. Big defensive hold here if Indiana can do it. Here's McDonald driving on Bailey. Good help by Evans. Towns and Orr for three. Oh, that's a killer. Towns and Orr answers with a three. And Minnesota leads by nine. Boy, did he ever spot up and fire it. He knew from the time that pass was coming to him, it was going up and in. It's quieted this crowd. 1-3-1 one, one zone. Henderson on the baseline. Eight-footer comes up short. And Walton has the rebound. 10.39 left, 51-42 Minnesota. Minnesota's done a real good job of not letting Indiana get a run together. Maybe three, four points in a row, that's about it. Walton comes back outside. Three-pointer is missed by Townsend Orr. Same shot he had before, and Cheney gets the board. Minnesota really staying with this 1-3-1. One, Shots uh, on this really should come from the baseline, Steve. And there are baseline shooters in there. Evans, Cheney, Graham can shoot from foul line extended. Two guards out front trying to split that defensive man, which Bailey and Graham are doing. And Bailey splits everybody that time with a drive. I think Damon Bailey's got to be the guy, Steve, to come in here, direct some traffic, and make some things happen. Well, Damon took a little blow here earlier. He was a little bit winded, came back in. Here is a nice, strong, quick, fast move, all those adjectives to the hoop, not one of those loping, I'm going to go in here and see what happens. He went straight to the hoop, and he's going to get rewarded with two free throws. That foul is going to go on Carter, his second. Bailey's at the line. He's got a good night. He's got 12. He's got 13. Minnesota brings Vashon Leonard back in. He's their big spark from the outside. McDonald takes a break. Bailey short on that second one, doesn't get the roll, and that ball is going to be out to Indiana as Minnesota loses control. Haskins calls for a defense on the out-of-bounds play. Cheney lined up to take the lob, but Damon goes into Evans. Evans on the wheel move. He's got it, but they're going to call the foul outside. And that's going to go on Carter. Evans pretty effective on that drive, Steve. Yeah, he is obviously not afraid to go in, make the spin move, come back to his left. Obviously going to be his strong suit. But I like his style. He's not afraid to get in there and bang. He's got a good little shot. That's three on Carter. The Minnesota Brain Trust in front of the bench trying to figure out what to do. Minnesota could be getting into some foul trouble here. Evans nails the first one. Colander is going to check back in. And Carter's going to sit out a while. And remember, Colander had three. 9.49 left. Carter leaves with six points. Evans has the second one. He's long on that one. Indiana's starting to struggle a little now from that line. 51-44. Indiana trails by seven. Damon Bailey with the tip. And looked like it might have gone off Townsend Orr. The official inside didn't see it that way. Minnesota retains possession. 
Bob Knight pacing the Indiana sidelines during this game. Minnesota still in control. Here's Leonard. Bailey's got to stay up close on him. Dana Jackson's trying to get open inside on Evans. Minnesota just needs to stay patient here. Lob pass inside. The uh, open man was Jackson, but Evans with the steal. Graham deflected. Fast break. Indiana trying to get a quick shot. Bailey on the drive. He misses it. Cheney on the tip. Once again, good things happen when you take it forcefully to the basket. Even though Damon did not get the layup to go in, Cheney was able to follow through and, more importantly, get everybody back into the game. Bailey starting to lead the team. IU's fans are up. The team is up, and Indiana's on defense. 51-46, 8.45 left. Leonard on the drive, he misses it. The fans wanted to travel, and that's going to be Minnesota ball. Indiana tipped it out of bounds. That would have been a big possession for Indiana if they could have come up with it. Clem Haskins working that bench. I think the Indiana fans were right on that call. Colander took about three steps to get his momentum towards the hoop. A great play by Graham. He dodged that pass that was coming in to knock it out of bounds. Indiana comes up with a turnover. Henderson really wants that ball inside. Bailey's in control. He's going to go to Cheney. Cheney on the move. Henderson wants it inside on Colander, and that's a foul. That's why Henderson wanted it. He knew Colander had four fouls, and he wanted to take him on a move. A lot of that was set up by the fact that the Indiana players spread out, and there were good action away from the basketball, bringing it right back towards Calvert as Henderson flashed to the ball. And as you said, he wanted it, so he set himself up that way. As Clem Haskins has to go back to the bench. Henderson has 12 points. McDonald comes in. Towns and Orr leaves. Colander picks up his fourth, and Haskins is not substituted for him yet. Bob Knight calls his guards over. Towns and Orr leaves with seven. Henderson's at the line. Short, you can tell right away when he left his hand. Cheney with the rebound and off balance. He gets it. Calvert Cheney's coming to life. Well, those are the kind of plays we talked about earlier that may help him with his jump shot. Now, how is that? Just to get the confidence, I can make a hoop. It took a long time, but Cheney's now moved into fifth on the all-time Big Ten scoring list. He's passed Michigan State great Steve Smith. He's not concerned about that right now. He wants Indiana to pull into the lead. The defensive shot goes up, and a pass goes inside to Carter. Evans on the D, and it's good. Jason Walton, 32, with that left-handed shot. Minnesota has really responded when times have gotten tough. Every single time, and that's why they hold on to the five-point lead. 7.40 left. Indiana smells a comeback. Minnesota in man-to-man. Damon -man. sizing up the defense. Trying to create something. Cheney wants to post up. Pass inside is away from Cheney, but a foul is going to be called on Minnesota. That time Jason Walton just took his hands around Cheney's waist. He said, here's how I'm going to play defense now. You're not going to get the ball. Posting up down low. Cheney's got him right on his back with post position. But as the ball comes in, Walton takes the right hand, pushes on the right hip. Says, Cheney, you this way, the ball this way. Big stat in this ball game. Minnesota now has 10, has nine team fouls in the second half. So Indiana will be in a two-shot situation from now on. There's Colander on the bench. Indiana with only three team fouls. So Minnesota a long way away from getting to that one and one. Albert Cheney just six points. But he's been coming on here strong lately. Indiana soybean farmers remind you to look for soybeans and everything from baby formula to salad dressing. And that free throw means $50 donated to Gleaner Statewide Fruit Bank Network. Matt Nover checks in for Brian Evans. Brian gets a big hand. There's the Indiana bench. Nover's coming in there for some rebounding and defense. Calvert Cheney has just picked up his seventh point. Well below his recent average. Now his eighth. 
And we've got a timeout with 7.25 left. Minnesota leads 53-50. We'll be back after these messages. the Welsh Ryan or Wiena Morris join me on the telecast but right here Indiana's got its hands full 53 to 50 725 left and these fans want some offense well you know everybody comes to a game and selfishly wants to see a real good competitive game well, I think these Indiana fans are getting just a little bit more competition from Minnesota than they'd like to look at that shooting 7 of 10 for Minnesota at 70 percent Indiana is limiting them only to 10 shots Turnover's the reason for that. Five for Minnesota. Minnesota still with the number of points for both teams that they wanted. There's a steal by Henderson. He slows it up. Good smart play. And Indiana's got the possession. Calvert Cheney decides not to take the three. Bailey's going to drive. It's been open. This is time it's blocked. A great block that time by Jason Walt. David obviously been more aggressive about taking it through the hole. And even though that one was blocked, more good things happen when you do that than bad. Good pressure now by Indiana outside. Here's Graham on Leonard. Bailey trying to stick on McDonald. Minnesota's going to run some time now off that shot clock. The fewer possessions for them in this ball game, the better, because they still have the three-point lead. Got to go now. Ten seconds on the clock. Nova comes to help. Oh, nearly blocks the shot. Henderson with a big board. Good Tough defensive rebound. help by Nova. Tough rebound. Good team play. Cheney's on the drive, and we're going to have a block against Minnesota. Cheney's going to go back to the line. Foul on Walt. And that's his fourth. Here's Cheney. Well, not only Calvert Cheney has come alive here in the last few minutes, but also Indiana, and it's been by taking the basketball to the hoop. And they're not standing around on the perimeter, passing it back and forth, no action underneath it. They've decided to just take it right at Minnesota. You know, a lot of times, Steve, though, Indiana this year is hit from the outside, and that's been their real thrust. When that shot's not going down, they've made the switch, as you mentioned, and really going inside. Cheney misses on the free throw. All free throws now for Indiana will be two. Cheney, you can see, disappointed with that shot. He's got to get, he's mad at himself. He's got to get back into this ball game. Make this second one, cut that lead. Minnesota, Minnesota is still avoiding the big run by Indiana. Down to six minutes in the game, and they still managed to keep the lead. He nearly comes up short on that one. The lead down to two, and it's as close as Indiana has been all game. Thirty two thirty was the last time Indiana got this close and now's the time to take it over the hump. We approach the five minute mark and Minnesota takes its time. Good match up here. Graham's got the quickness to stay with Leonard. Switches on to McDonald. Indiana not letting that ball come inside. Great job by Graham to keep it on that side of the floor. Walton's wide open. He nails it. Mix up on defense. You can't give Walton that shot. Walton was leading scorer in the first half by primarily hitting those kind of jump shots. It's his first bucket here in the second half. Though. And you want to watch Minnesota now for fatigue. They played 35 good hard minutes. They've got to keep it up for five more minutes to expect to win this one. Henderson able to do a nice job to grab that ball. He's a little disappointed that he didn't get a chance for three points, but Minnesota is going to foul again. Let's see who it is. Once again, what's Indiana doing? Get the ball down low or take it to the hole one way or the other. Get it closer in. None of the perimeter stuff. From Minnesota standpoint, too, Indiana pulls within two, and somehow, some way, Minnesota finds a, an answer to that. Jerome, or Jason Walton on the jump shot the last time to push it back up to four. Indiana's going to have to answer with some free throws. We've had some players get up there and make one out of two just as Henderson has. Got to start nailing both of those free throws and putting the pressure on Minnesota. This time Henderson is able to. The lead again down to two points. And we are at the five minute mark and this place is going to get loud. One four offense, high low now by Minnesota. 
First time we've seen this. Again, the patience outside by the Gophers. Now, Minnesota's been pretty deliberate throughout the game, but there seems to be even more deliberation right now, almost to the point where they are getting stagnant. They're, they're starting to stand and watch. And, and that could get, be fatigue also. They get too close to the 10 second shot clock and then they hurry the offense. Now it's down to six. A good trap in the corner. And Bashar Leonard doesn't see the clock. Now he fires a wild one. It's missed. Bailey's there to the board. There's a good example right there. Indiana's got the numbers. Five on four. Nobody stops Bailey. He goes in and a foul. The first time this game has been tied, and Damon Bailey went coast to coast. Now watch. Minnesota has done so many things good defensively, but we've seen a real weakness here over the past 10 minutes, right down the middle of the defense. And Damon Bailey sees it better than anybody on that play. Okay, five fouls on Walton. Sid Rhoda ever comes over to signal the Clem Haskins. One minute to make the substitution. 15 points for Damon Bailey. He's come on well here in the second half, and he's got a chance to give Indiana the lead. Minnesota taking their time. They want this crowd to quiet down a little bit. As Walton leaves the game, he picks up his fifth foul. Cole Lander checks back in. He's got four. Same strategy, though, Steve. Indiana's got to keep going inside and keep getting to that line. You know what Clem Haskins is doing here? He's taking a sweet time about making the substitution. Does two things, gives a little blow to the players, but also trying to take this crowd out of this last play by Damon Bailey. Look at this, they prevent the player from crossing, although Damon didn't have the ball. That nearly cost Indiana a game. A couple back. As Indiana pulled that game off uh, against Michigan. Bailey is short, but it drops. Indiana has the lead. A nice shooter's roll there by Damon Bailey. 4-10 left in the game. Indiana leads by one. Well, the Indiana crowd says it all. Defense from an Indiana perspective right now is everything. Not to let Minnesota get back in the lead. Good timeout that time by Towns and Orr to avoid the turnover. And we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. left Indiana hanging on to that one point lead let's watch Damon Bailey this is called recognize what the defense is going to give you and he's recognized as well as anybody this second half all the attention is out on the perimeter at that time Damon uh, deceptively quick and deceptively fast took advantage of it shooting for the game Minnesota still hot Indiana well below their season's average it's coming down to this last three minutes and 30 seconds. Cheney really battling inside on Jackson. He has to come back out with it. Looks like Minnesota wants a three. Let's see the call. Shot clock, 45 seconds. Shot clock expired. And Indiana's going to get the ball. At the timeout, the shot clock is not reset. Minnesota must have thought that they still had a new 45 second clock because they weren't looking for the shot at all. I think you're right, Laz. Big turnover. Chris Reynolds is going to check in for Matt Nover. Minnesota goes to full court pressure. 
This is why we stay in Indiana in the wintertime. Big Ten college basketball. <laughs> is that the reason? That's the, That's reason the best reason. That's right. All right, Indiana, a one-point lead, 3.20 to go. Near steal by Minnesota, and an over and back call. Well, I don't think that's right. Indiana is saying that Minnesota touched it, but Sid Redover says no, that Indiana was the only one to touch it. Nover's going to come back in. Let's watch it now. I think the only reason this ball goes back over the 10-second the line right there is because of defensive pressure. Indiana touched it, uh, but Minnesota never did grab it, so another turnover for Indiana. 3-12 left, Indiana the one-point lead. Seven turnovers for the Gophers. That last one costly. Indiana's only second. Defense has been the key for Indiana. Colander way outside. This is where you want them to run their offense. Towns and Orr. Here's Carter. 10 seconds to shoot. Trying to start an offense. Good drive that time. McDonald takes the baseline. Indiana doesn't help out. And Minnesota regains the lead. McDonald just with a good, solid move to the hoop. And as you said, Laz, no one saw him coming. Cheney tries a quick pass inside to Graham. It's kicked. That does reset the 45-second clock. Also gives the Minnesota a chance to make a substitution. Dana Jackson checks back in. 45-second clock perched right on top of the backboard so the players can easily see it. But a lot of times you're so distracted in the course of the offense that you don't get a chance to see it. Vashon comes in and he just came out. Dan yep. Dawkins is noticing it now. Here comes Rhoda Heifer. They've got to stay on your toes in this league. Not only did the whole Indiana coaching staff <laughs> notice it, but about 17,000 other coaches <laughs> saw that one. We do have some fans who know the rules. Here comes Leonard back to the sideline. McDonald comes back in. Well, let's see. The officials are at the scorer's bench. He's got to, and here's the, the word back to the Minnesota bench. He's got to wait for the ball to come in play before he can check back in. And Haskins gets the word. Hartman and Dockage came off that bench quickly that time. Indiana ball. Bailey inside. The last guy to stop Michael Jordan. There he is. <laughs> so what's he paying you to say that? All right, here we go. Graham tries to go inside to Nover. Double team. Graham decides to hold up. Here's Henderson. Cutting inside, and that's going to be on Carter. Henderson is a force fighting for that ball inside. That's going to be four on Carter, and Henderson's going to go to the line. We're going to see a good, quick cut into the lane right now. Flash right to the center, and Carter not able to keep up with Henderson. Pulls on the shoulder, gets an obvious foul there. Quickness wins over strength that time. Carter with four fouls. Colander has four. Indiana's back at the line. I guess we'll call that a leaner, but it goes. Tie score. As you know that, Roe, that's the shooter's touch. He's got high arch on that shot. 15 for Henderson. That one looks a lot better. Indiana leads by one. 2.09 left in the game. 16 points for Henderson. It's coming down to the wire. Indiana wanted a foul on Leonard. They didn't get it. Minnesota looks like they're quicker into their offense now, being down one point. Leonard's the guy they want to start. They're going to run the guards down low again. They did this with the first pass. Trying to find that guard down low. They're going to Carter inside. His shot is no good. Jackson's got the rebound. He misses on the shot. And Minnesota is hitting the boards. Bailey takes a spill. And he's going to pick up the foul. It does go on Bailey. All right, this is Carter, the junior forward, 6'8, 235. Uses all that bulk to go up. Jackson, 
with a nice strong rebound. You see Damon there getting called for the foul. McDonald comes back in. Big point of the game here. Indiana's fourth team foul does not send Minnesota to the line for two, so they have got to score from the field. Only 10 points for Minnesota off the bench tonight. They average 24 a game. Block uh, the five second call running down, so McDonald throws it off of Bailey's leg. And Minnesota gets it out of bounds again. 136 left. Indiana leads by one. Minnesota ball. Here we go again. Inside to Townsend or Graham tries to keep him on the right side. Indiana wanted to travel. Cheney fronting in on Jackson. Steal by Indiana. Two on one. Graham slows it down. It's stripped away. McDonald with the slap. Graham did the right thing to pick it up, but he couldn't get it to a teammate. 115 left. Minnesota ball. Great Grant's defensive play was down here. Towns and Orr came right back and matched him. The biggest defensive play of the game right here. Indiana leading by one, needs to stop one minute to go in this game. Ten seconds on the shot clock, 45 on the game clock. Here's McDonald. Jackson, McDonald's gonna fire. It's short, but Minnesota rebounds. Townsend Orr checks back on the three. Minnesota can hold for the last shot. And now they want timeout. 29 seconds left in the game. Indiana 58 to 57. We'll be back after these messages. He steals here. Let's watch Minnesota, Indiana rather, Graham strips the ball. He goes down. He's trying to find out where the defense is. He picks it up, but quick hands by McDonald. He makes the steal. There's only two seconds left on the shot clock. Tough defense, the kind of shot you want him to take. And look out. Here comes a big rebound from their biggest rebounder, Randy Carter. Steve, Minnesota has the opportunity on the road here to take a final shot. A basket, any kind of basket can win the game. Let's see what they do. 25 seconds to go. They've got to go with 10 or less. 10, nine seconds, wait till then to go after. 15. Just about there. Glenn Haskins wants them to go now. Five seconds, there's a turnover. Unbelievable. Greg Graham with pressure defense. Clem Haskins can't believe it. And nobody likes that call. There's timeout on the floor with 13 seconds left. Indiana leads by one. We'll be back after these messages. This land is for us. Let's watch it. Here's a five second call. Greg Graham, you gotta be closely guarded for five seconds with no advancement to the basket. Graham nearly slipped there, a pass, but just before McDonald got rid of it, the biggest whistle of the game, and Clem Haskins can't believe it. And he didn't protest the call. He knew that was the right call. Just upset with the player. 13 seconds, Indiana inbounds. They've got Bailey with the ball. Comes into Henderson, back to Bailey. Bailey's trying to run time. Minnesota has to foul, and they do. Randy Carter forces that foul on Bailey. We're at eight seconds left in the game. Bailey gets two shots, and that's five on Carter. So again, Haskins gets the 60 seconds for the substitution. Well, that was a tough thing for Minnesota right there because they wasted four or five seconds in getting the foul, and then they have their go-to guy underneath and their rebounder make the fifth foul. Now they got to put some fresh body in here. This will be the first game that an Indiana opponent has shot more than 50 percent, better than 50 percent. Minnesota's at 58 percent for the game, but it may be to no avail. Their nine second half turnovers have hurt them. David Washington, a 6'10 sophomore, is in the lineup for Minnesota. But Sean Leonard is down at the other end of the floor being guarded by Calvert Cheney. He's looking for a long pass, and now he comes back up. Ryan Wolf checks in, number three. Sophomore out of Martinsville, Indiana. Played for his father there. So Minnesota's coming with some three-point shooters. 
thinking that if Bailey makes two of these, they're going to have to get a three-pointer to send this to overtime. Bailey's at the line. He's short on the first. And you see the reaction from the crowd. Now a little different strategy for Minnesota. A three-point shot wins the game. Bailey's good on the second. Two-point lead for Indiana, and Indiana calls timeout. All right, we're going to get a chance to stay here, and we've got some strategy now. Big, important miss on that free throw. Again, really, though, Steve, the same situation for Minnesota. They've got a chance uh, to either take a two-point shot to tie the game or a three to win it, and they're on the road. What do you expect uh, Clem Haskins to try here? Well, I think they're going to set up for a three-point opportunity. If it's there, fine, but they do know that they can dump it down inside and get a guy in for a, a layup or a tip in and still be in the game. But it's not in their best interest, obviously, to play this kind of game to this point and go into overtime. I think they're more fatigued and more foul trouble. Here's a big stat. Indiana has four team fouls in the second half. They have two more fouls to give before Minnesota goes to the line. There's only eight seconds left in the game. Wouldn't it make sense for Indiana to let the inbounds pass come in, foul the guy, let a second one come in, foul again, because they don't get the Minnesota does not get to go to the line. Well, that can be, certainly be a defensive strategy. And it's, it's one that is being discussed right now. But that's why Coach Knight and his staff are paid what they are paid to make those decisions. The only thing that could hurt you there is if the guy sees the foul coming, gets in the act of shooting. Even if it's an 80-foot bomb, he gets fouled. That's three shots, three free throws. That's a tough call. We, the team does not practice fouling. They practice not fouling. Yeah, I don't look for that to happen here. Only as a last, last resort where somebody might break away and have an uncontested three-point shot to foul before they get in the act of shooting. Full, full court pressure by Indiana. Eight seconds left. Towns and Orr will take it out. Minnesota has their three-point shooters. Not a big lineup, so Indiana should have an advantage on the boards. They cross underneath. Here's McDonald and a foul on Bailey. Two seconds expire. Well, there's one Indiana player that knows about no the shot. Situation. As we talked about no shot. So that's the fifth team foul. It is four fouls on Bailey. Not in the act of shooting. Obviously, a good foul there because it took away the plan strategy. Here's Leonard. He drives to the hoop. The ball goes out of bounds to Indiana. Damon Bailey, great grab and Cheney with the pressure. Two seconds left in the game. Indiana has the ball out of bounds. Need a long pass here, Steve. Send him down and throw a long one. Comes into Cheney, and he's fouled. Chris Reynolds broke, but they did. Damon did not throw him the ball. Clem Haskins is watching one slip away that they had a good chance to win. Five fouls on Deshaun Leonard. Smart play by Bailey. He got it to their Indiana's big guy, Calvert Chaney. And a, that was a second smart play in a row because the first one being the foul that took away Minnesota's timeout strategy for a full-length court last second shot. Let's watch the drive. Here's Vashawn Leonard. Look how he can to keep his head down. Graham gets a hand and so does Bailey. Well, the ball was taken out with six seconds in half court, but not a timeout at that time. It was just go with what you know. And I think Vashawn just lost control of it, having his focus just get into the hole somehow, some way. One second left. Cheney at the line. And he's got two free throws. the reason you want him up there. He's got 10 points, but he's really made some big plays here in the second half. Three-point lead for Indiana. This free throw wraps it up. Indiana, he makes Indiana has nobody in the lane, and he does. Four. Indiana calls timeout. Interesting timeout by Indiana with just one second left because a three-point shot, the only way a three-point shot wins it if it goes in and they get fouled, and they get it fouled. sends the game to overtime. That's right. And believe me, Coach Knight is reminding every single player of that possibility. Defense really came through, Steve. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Bud Light. The ball, they're down four. 
And Indiana's not putting any pressure on the out of bounds play right now. Pat Knight checks in for Calvert Cheney. Cheney leaves with 11 points. Indiana. Minnesota needs that long pass. Let's see what they do. Here's McDonald. Here it comes. Just stand there. And that'll do it. Indiana with the victory, 61-57. The coaches meet at midcourt. And Indiana goes to 7-0 and in the Big Ten in a hard-fought contest that they pull out at the end. The executive producer for Raycom Sports is Peter Rall. Senior coordinating producer, Johnny Tyus. The telecast of tonight's game has been produced by Peter O'Brien, directed by Jerry Wheatley. Technical director, Dennis Lanius, and our associate director, Joe Goodrich. Our next telecast will be this Saturday from the... On the man-to-man -man defense, there's...